in intermolecular attractive forces are the forces that make one molecule attract to another molecule. That's what we'll take a look at in this video clip. One type of intermolecular attractive force is known as dispersion forces. Also known as London dispersion forces or sometimes referred to as van der Waals attractions. A second type of intermolecular attractive force is something known as the dipole-dipole attractive force. A third type of intermolecular attractive force is the hydrogen bond. Of these forces, dispersion is the weakest of the three. Dipole-dipole is medium in strength of these three intermolecular attractive forces. And the hydrogen bonds are the strongest of these three intermolecular attractive forces. Let's first focus on the type of force known as a dispersion force. Now, all particles, atoms, molecules, have an electron cloud. The electron cloud is not st static, but rather electron cloud has slight motion to it. What can happen in an electron cloud is temporarily the electron density can shift to one side of the cloud. With the electron density shifting, this creates a partial negative on one half of the cloud and a partial positive on the other half. The negative from this cloud will induce a shift in the neighboring cloud of a particle nearby, causing the electrons in this cloud to shift, creating a partial positive on one side and a partial negative on the other side of that cloud temporarily. Now this is a temporary shift in the electron density of the cloud. It's taking place in the blink of an eye. What this creates is we have the partial negative on one cloud, a partial positive on a neighboring cloud, and temporarily these charges exist and there's a force of attraction between the opposite charges. This force of attraction that exists between the shifting electron densities of the electron clouds is known as a dispersion force. Of the intermolecular attractive forces, this temporary shifting of the electron cloud, which creates these temporary negative and positives, which have a slight attraction between one another, is a fairly weak attractive force between molecules or atoms. In molecules that are nonpolar, where they have a symmetrical electron cloud, and we can see the electron density in the cloud is uniformly distributed, Things of this nature that are nonpolar only form dispersion forces. For something that's nonpolar, the only type of attractive force they can create is this type known as dispersion forces. Nonpolar can create dispersion forces because every electron cloud has this little weeble wobble or jiggle to it that creates these temporary charges. Again, what happens here is the electron cloud has a little jiggle to it. Electron density temporarily shifts to one side in a nonpolar molecule, creates a slight negative on one side. This induces a neighboring molecule to create a slight positive as electron density shifts in that molecule. And then there's a slight attraction that forms between the particles. This attraction right here is what we would call the dispersion force. Now, all dispersion forces are not created equal. So we'll have to take a look at different shapes and sizes of molecules can influence the size of a dispersion force. For example, imagine, if you will, a sumo wrestler. Now, one of the things we can say about sumo wrestlers is that sumo wrestlers have a lot of jiggle. They have a lot of mass to them, and a large sumo wrestler has a lot of jiggle to them. Now, in contrast to our sumo wrestlers, imagine a couple ballerinas. A ballerina, in contrast to a sumo wrestler, has very little jiggle. Sumo wrestler we'd characterize as being a human being that's rather large. Ballerina, we would say, is something that's rather small. Let's keep the mental image of the sumo wrestler and ballerinas and extend our analogy to atoms and molecules. 
Let's say we have a large atom or molecule and compare it to a small atom or molecule. The large atom or molecule will have a larger electron cloud compared to the small atom or molecule, which has a smaller electron cloud. Consequently, something with a large electron cloud will have more jiggle to the cloud. Something with a small electron cloud will have a little less jiggle or movement of the electron cloud. With more jiggle, what happens is the size of the temporary charges that get created are bigger. And if we have bigger charges, that leads us to a stronger intermolecular attractive force. Whereas with a smaller molecule, we have less jiggle of the electron cloud, so the size of the charges that get generated are smaller. And with a smaller charge size, that means the attractive forces generated with these dispersion forces are weaker. So in general, what we can say here is that for dispersion forces, the larger the electron cloud, which we'd see with larger molecules and atoms, the stronger the dispersion attractive forces that are created. The smaller the electron cloud for smaller atoms and molecules, the weaker the dispersion forces that will be created. As an example, let's compare two nonpolar molecules, Br2 and H2. The Br2 is a much larger molecule than what we would see for H2. Both molecules are nonpolar. The Br2's larger electron cloud, when it shifts compared to the H2 electron cloud, the Br2 cloud will generate stronger dispersion forces. Comparing boiling points, which is the temperature at which something turns from a liquid to a gas, which is essentially providing the energy to make the particles separate, we can see that the boiling point of Br2 is 332 Kelvin, which is much greater than the boiling point for hydrogen of 20 Kelvin. This difference would solely come from the change in the size of the electron clouds of the two species here, the Br2 compared to the H2. In addition to the size of the electron cloud, the shape of the electron cloud can also influence the strength of the dispersion forces. Let's compare two isomers. They have the same formula, C5H12. One will be pentane, the other C5H12 will be 2,2-dimethylpropane. Because they're isomers and have the same atom, C5H12, their molar mass is the same for both. We'll draw a simplified skeleton structure for each, showing just the carbon atoms, leaving out the hydrogens for now. Both compounds are hydrocarbons, therefore both compounds would be considered nonpolar molecules. Given that they're nonpolar molecules, the only type of attraction force between molecules will be dispersion forces. In our molecule of C5H12 that's known as pentane, the carbons are connected in a straight chain. And what happens is we see dispersion forces forming along the length of the chain. Every location where there's a little jiggle of the electron cloud, dispersion forces can be created. The other isomer of C5H12, 2,2-dimethylpropane, has a more compact structure. The more compact cloud shape for this particular compound, the 2,2-dimethylpropane, means that there's less opportunity for the electron clouds to essentially bump into each other and be attracted. With less opportunity for contact between the clouds, there's fewer dispersion forces between the clouds and we have a lesser attractive force that's generated between these molecules. And what we see as we compare boiling points for the two compounds is the straight chain C5H12 pentane has a boiling point of 309 Kelvin, which is greater than the boiling point for the 2,2-dimethylpropane, which is 283. The higher boiling point would be indicative of stronger dispersion forces between molecules. And once again, for molecules that are nonpolar, the only attractive force that exists between nonpolar molecules is dispersion forces. Now let's take a look at our next one known as the dipole dipole attractive force between molecules. Dipole dipole is only applicable.
for molecules that are identified as being polar molecules. Let's recall now, in a nonpolar molecule, there's a non-symmetrical electron cloud, and there's an uneven distribution of the electron density. This is a permanent feature of the molecule. It's not temporary as what, as what we saw in the dispersion forces, with just a temporary jiggling of electron cloud. With the electron density shifted more towards one end of the molecule in the molecule's electron cloud, this creates permanent positive and negative ends to the molecule. With positive and negative ends to the molecule, the molecule is now identified as a polar molecule. Given that the polar molecules have a negative end, positive end, if another polar molecule comes near, we have its positive end and negative end, and we generate attractive forces in here between the positive and negative portions of the molecules. These attractive forces that take place between the positive and negative ends of neighboring molecules is what we call dipole-dipole attractive forces. In a polar molecule, the partial charges on each end of the molecule are typically larger than the charges created in dispersion forces, and with larger charges, the strength of the attractive force becomes stronger. Our last force is the one known as hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bond is the strongest of our intermolecular attractive forces, and it's essentially a supercharged dipole-dipole attractive force. Hydrogen bonds are only possible when the hydrogen is covalently bonded in a molecule to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are small, highly electronegative atoms, and that's key to the creation of hydrogen bonds. In nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, the nucleus is still very close to the bonding valence electrons. It's a key feature, another reason why nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine have the capacity when bonded covalently to hydrogen that molecule can make hydrogen bonds to a neighboring molecule. A hydrogen atom, on the other hand, hydrogen is unique in that it has only one valence electron. And it has only one layer of electron clouds surrounding the nucleus. The pull is so strong from the highly electronegative atoms such as fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, the electron cloud gets extremely distorted. The pull is so strong, it essentially strips off most of the electron cloud from the hydrogen. In fact, the cloud is pulled off so far, and there's only one layer of electron cloud, it essentially leaves almost like a naked proton off here on the end exposed, where the full positive charge is now available to interact with some neighboring molecules. Now, with the electron cloud, essentially stripped off of the single proton in the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, what that does is the size of the partial charges created, the positive and the partial negative, become much larger than in a normal dipole-dipole interaction. And if we generate, if this creates larger partial positive and negative charges, that means the attractive forces that get generated will be much, much stronger in a hydrogen bond situation than a normal dipole-dipole, which is even stronger than what we see in dispersion forces. These strong attractions between these partial positives and negatives created by the uneven electron distribution with these highly electronegative atoms bonded to hydrogen, that's what generates our hydrogen bonds or attractive forces between these neighboring molecules. A special note here, a hydrogen bond is not a covalent bond, but a hydrogen bond is an electrostatic attraction between the partial positive and partial negative charges created by uneven electron distribution. To show the strength of hydrogen bonds, water molecules can form hydrogen bonds between neighboring mole water molecules. The boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin. On the other hand, the similar size molecule to water, methane, they're both small molecules, methane, which is nonpolar, has a boiling point of only 113 Kelvin, a difference of over 200 degrees. 
water molecules can form the strong hydrogen bonds located between neighboring molecules, which is fairly strong whereas the methane can only form the weak dispersion forces between neighboring molecules since methane is a nonpolar molecule. Now one thing as we finish to keep in mind is dispersion forces are weaker than dipole-dipole which is weaker than hydrogen bonds for our intermolecular attractive forces. However, compared to covalent or ionic bonds, our intermolecular attractive forces are very, very weak relative to covalent or ionic bonds.